Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show. Join us each week as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great game. In the upper left here, you see the uh, the hill course as it was originally in 1924. This is an actual picture from the 1924 PGA Championship. Uh, quite a difference in the crowd uh, that watched Tiger Woods uh, at Valhalla and, and at uh, Oh, Beth Page this past year, but there were a few spectators as you can see. The next one over, as I said earlier, the uh, the ladies PGA had some roots here in French Lake. Actually, came here in 1957, had another women's tournament here in 1958. I think you can see Patty Berg, who's the second from the from the left there, and we could probably get the names of all those people. I'm not sure that Babe Zaharias is not uh, right at the center there, about the third from the left. been blessed to, to acquire uh, the 18 original drawings from Donald Ross uh, Donald Ross's desk we have uh, all 18 as you can see golf course architecture has changed a lot over the years in those days they used a piece of graph paper and a pencil and pretty well drew it in you can see some of the uh, the descriptions of the holes and how they arrived at the design that they or arrived at the product that they actually designed there's some cutaway views of, of greens and and uh, you can see the bunkering in the the grass knolls and the where he wanted the uh, the tall fescues and that sort of thing. You can see the original bunkering on the golf course, and we're using a lot of those uh, those sketches today as we go through our bunker renovation project. We're trying to take the course back more to the original, so uh, we're we're getting a lot of use out of these drawings. But we're probably one of the few golf courses that are lucky enough to have the original drawings of uh, of the course. <laughs> like to go through some of the, the memorabilia that I've acquired over time. I've been here for the past 25 years and uh, have been able to pick up a few things from the early golf history of French Lick. There are a lot of French Lick uh, historical items around, but there are not very many of the golf items. Uh, got some golf clubs that were made here. These are from three different uh, club makers. I understand all these gentlemen were from Scotland, and they all actually worked here at French Lick. The first one is... Uh, called the Lockwood Special. It's a, by A.H. Lockwood. It's a putter, and the unique thing about it, it's wood with an ivory face. You can see the ivory. Very, very nice handcrafted piece. Our second one is a, that looks like it could be a, a, a manufactured piece, maybe by a Spalding or a McGregor, but it's an A.C. Tollefson, French Lick, Indiana. 
it does say hand forged, but it has some of the similar markings of a, of a spalding uh, from those days, all wooden shaft. Then over here, we've got uh, the Pluto specials. You can I don't know if you can pick it up or not, Art, but there's uh, the little Pluto guy out on the toe. And then the manufacturer of the forge person was Frank Adams. And on this club, it's unique because it has the, the initials of Thomas D. Taggart uh, stamped in the logo as well. So that tells me that uh, it was a pre-1925 or 30 piece right in that area. So it's it's an early one, like I said, all with wooden shafts. Then here we've got a couple of scorecards from the original golf courses. And uh, start with the hill course. As you can see, our par now is par 70 and our ladies par is par 74. But on the original course, the par was 72. Because in those days, it was the belief that they needed to have two par fives on each side. So the 5th and 12th holes flopped back and forth between par 4 and par 5 for years. Now we play them as par 4s. They were pretty short to be par 5s, around 460. Over here then is the Valley Course uh, original card. Shows a 6,607 yard course, um, probably from the tips of the tees there at that time. Um, this is an old advertisement from the Chicago Tribune. This is from about 1912 to 15, somewhere in there. It talks about the golf grounds of the of the course, so we know that it was pre-1920 because the hill course hadn't come to be yet. Then, an important part of the history here at the golf course was was the caddy. Uh, back in those days we had a, a staff of over 300 caddies. Some of those caddies were professional caddies who earned their living and fed their families by uh, by caddying here at the courses. Others were schoolboys, and I think uh, probably a lot of the stories you're going to hear around the around the fire here today are from from the boys who were in school at that time or maybe just out of school and uh, and some of the experiences they had. A lot, a lot of us boys and and when there wasn't much golf going going on, why well, they had to do other things. <laughs> Some of them was uh, like uh, playing mumble peg, uh, and had some great mumble peg players around here. Another one was uh, we used to pitch pennies to a line, but sometimes it get out of hand. You know, we get to pitching nickels and dimes, and you know, that was a lot of money, but. We had uh, a lot of hotel guests. They they seen that and they wanted to play. <laughs> so we were, we were nice people. You know we can't let them out. So we let them right in there. Of course they were inexperienced. <laughs> of course it cost them <laughs> to learn to play. You know. <laughs> and, and we buy a lot of groceries and that <laughs> that money on the way home. Bill talked about the. Uh the games that they played, the mumbly peg with their knives and the, the pitch and the pennies. I heard about a fight one time that an old caddy and a young fella had out in the, the street by the caddy house. Uh, this old fellow was uh, an experienced caddy, and, uh, but he didn't dress the part very well. I, you know, they said that he wore clothes that a beggar probably wouldn't wear, but he always had a roll of money that you couldn't get in your pocket. And uh, one day he and one of the young caddies got in a fight, and they said it was such a fight that when the fight was over, that the old caddy had his shoe on, but his sock was off laying in the road. Now, that's a pretty tough fight. On this caddy, and, uh, when uh, at times, like I said, when the Midwest tournament and thing like that, they couldn't get enough caddies, or uh, so uh, we'd go to schools and that uh, they would let the kids out of school to caddy because the money is hard to come by back in those days, and and they was always glad to uh, let them out so they could make a few dollars. Uh, my first day of caddying. And I can't remember exactly how old I was, probably nine, ten, in that neighborhood. But back then they paid uh, 75 cents a bag, and they put me out double that day. And when I got in, I had the big red marks on my shoulders. But anyway, when they paid me the dollar and a half, I clenched that in my hands so tight. I run all the way from the clubhouse home. And uh, so when I got home, I hand that dollar and a half to my mother. And she handed me back a quarter. 
And you know that was the biggest piece of money that I ever got my hands on was that quarter. Because that buck and a half went for help put food on the table for the family. Joe Lewis was always gambling with uh, Pete Thomason it, from Louisville. And they'd come up here and they, uh, Bill remembers as well. They, they, they stayed here all the time. And uh, Joe Lewis was the only black that was, could play on the golf course. But he couldn't live in the hotel. He stayed at the Collard Hotel in West Spaden, the Wadi Hotel. And another time, they was here on uh, number nine, come up here on number nine, and Joe had a two-tone Cadillac, and he parked it out here by the kitchen by number nine. And uh, they drove up there, and him and Pete come with, one of them was probably six or eight feet from the cup, and the other might have been ten. And they bet, uh, I think it was $6,000 on that one put. Pete uh, put it, and he put his in, he was closer to the hole, and then Joe put it, and he missed it. And he was so mad, he walked over and teed that uh, golf ball up and hit it right in the side of that new Cadillac. Just made a <laughs> great big dent right inside of it. But they, they took Joe for a ride all the time. They was uh, different ones around here played golf with him, and uh, he, he took well care of them because they beat him, about, beat him all the time. They had a caddy here in the in the 50s they called him one-arm jack i don't know what his real name was but he had one good arm and he had one arm that was off just below the shoulder but he was still able to carry double because he'd hold his left side up and hang on to the bag and i had a fellow tell me that he was on the 13th tee one morning and uh, he looked over at the fifth hole which is a, a hole a little par three that sets up on a on a high hill and they said that uh, one-arm jack had uh, been drunk they thought and uh, fell from number five green and said he fell from number five all the way down to the tee, which is about a hundred and some yards away, but he never let go of the golf bags. He still had both bags when he got to the bottom. <laughs> the fellow that I started working with here was an old caddy, as I said before, and, and he told the story about the caddy's revolt. Um, he said it was nothing to find three or four golf carts in the river uh, in the mornings when you came to work. And uh, there's some wooden bridges on the Valley Golf Course there, and uh, the caddies would at night go out there with uh, spike nails or uh, long nails and drive up through the wooden boards in the in the bridge and the carts would run over them. Of course, it would flatten all the tires and they said that the service station across the street, the guy made a million dollars just uh, repairing flat tires on golf carts. Uh, he told one story that was really good though that uh, he got out with a, a twosome one Sunday morning and the, that the other twosome had a, a golf cart and said the fellow in the golf cart every hole would yell over at the other twosome's caddy and say, Caddy, how far is it? And he'd tell him and said, uh, the longer it went, the worse it got. And said they finally got to the fourth hole and, and said the, the, guy, the guy in the cart yelled over and said, Caddy, said, what club do I use? And the caddy yelled back and said, why don't you ask that golf cart? <laughs> Here we have some old caddy badges. Um, the oldest being the French Lake Golf Club badge up here. It's a metal, all metal, um, actually it's a sterling silver badge. Then as you move through, you've got the French Lake Springs Hotel badge. This is probably 1940. And then here's the Sheraton Caddy badge, which was after 1956. So, you know, a different, uh, little different look. Then up here, this is an old golf member badge. Uh, I, I assume they sold a, an annual membership. And if you can look at it there, it shows uh, our little Pluto guy on there. And it says on there, French Lake Golf Club member. started down here I came down and talked to Mr. Ferguson and I it's the first job I begged to get I really wanted to do this job and and um, I went up on the hill and looked at it and, and then I that was dumb enough to say well you can't build a golf course up here <laughs> and I almost proved it too it took two and a half years and I'm behind time and way over budget but honestly I don't think I've ever had a golf course that the ambience around it it's as good as this golf course right here. And, um, and what I've done as far as tee to green and greens and bunkers, that's all in the eyes of the beholder. But the, the exterior, the ambience when you play this golf course, uh, I had lucky to, enough to build one on the ocean course that 
Kiowa and, and looking at the Atlantic Ocean is not too bad and and Mr. Kohler up there had gave me a little land on the Lake Michigan that that's part of the ambience it's part of it but the, what I say when you when you go up here today I hope you get the same feeling because you know you say you don't play much golf you don't have to play golf up there you really don't you just just ride around and take a look because the the scenery you have here and the from every hole and every tee in the fairway is, is uh, I think it's so different and I, and it's also because of the change in, in the seasons, the spring, the summer, and fall, you get such a different look as from the whole thing when the first done. So uh, it's been one of, it's really, this job has been one of the highlights of my digging dirt here and there. I've been digging up a lot of other people's property, but this has been the most fun I've ever had. Thank you. <laughs>